Hey y'all, hi. Hi. <laughs> what an unqualified disaster. So I, a few weeks ago, launched a protracted search for a tinted lip balm that I love. Is that too much to ask? A tinted lip balm that I love? It's turning out to be a multi-video search. In the first video, I compared five new ones to my reigning champion, which was great but not perfect. One of them beat it out, but still isn't, I think, as good as I can do. So I decided to keep going, and in the comments on that video, a lot of you were clamoring for me to do the luxury lip balm battle. And and a lot of you were clamoring for me to do the drugstore lip balm battle. So I decided to do both of them. But the question was, which one to do next? It was a real Hallows and Horcruxes situation. I went back and forth for a while and I eventually settled on luxury. And I purchased for this video at exorbitant expense just for luxury lip balms. I mean, I was spending the YouTube channel's budget for review products, which I usually spend in a pretty unbothered way because it's an investment. You have to spend money to make money. That's what that budget it is for. But these lip balms were so expensive and it was so much money and basically all of my budget pretty much for February. The absurdity of it was really hitting when I placed these orders, but I decided to do it anyway. The products arrived. I have tried each one one time and with each one I was like, oh no. And by the time I got to the fourth one, I was like, Oh no. So today I'm going to try them all on for you, talk about how they stack up against my requirements for a really good lip tint, and see, giving them the benefit of the doubt, if I can find even a shred, even a scrap of a redeeming quality in any of them. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope you enjoy it. I make beauty videos, I make other videos, just generally I'm interested in aesthetics overall. This is pretty much a straight up beauty video. If you like this, I hope you'll subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the the meat of the video. Okay, first up, the Chanel Rouge Cocoa Balm. This was the first one that arrived because I had to order it separately. I got the other three at Sephora, but I had to order this one from Nordy's. It came earlier and I ripped the package open and put it on. You'll see. This might be the thing that came up the most in the comments on that first lip balm video in the luxury category. Everybody who mentioned luxury mentioned this product. Everyone was like, you have to try the Chanel Rouge Coco Balm. I got it in the shade 938 Keep Cool, which might have been my mistake. It was just the least pink nude that they had, and it said it had a little shimmer in it, and one of the things I'm looking for is high shine. So it was easy to decide which color. It clearly was the one I thought that that would be the likeliest to check all of my boxes. However, actually it's kind of working this time. It's kind of hitting. And even the fragrance isn't bothering me as much. I wonder if there was like an overlay of shimmer on it. And so the first time I put it on, the first time I put it on, <laughs> a few nights ago when it arrived, I wasn't wearing makeup that day. So that might've been part of it, but I put it on and it was the evening. So we weren't getting that much light from outside. It was like dusk and just some low lights in the house. I put it on and I felt like it was a very, very frost frosty, like 1990s frosty brown lipstick. And I love a brown lipstick, but I'm specifically looking for something that doesn't read as a lipstick on me, but rather a very lightly tinted balm, which makes me realize that I jumped right into the products without going through my requirements. But what I'm looking for is a bullet format, thick and nourishing, only very lightly tinted balm that doesn't have an abhorrent smell or taste. And I want it to be very shiny. When I first pulled this out of the package and put it on, it looked dark like a lipstick, extremely frosty instead of shiny, and it smelled and tasted like perfume, like it was very heavily scented. But right now, under these lights, in this circumstance, with makeup on the rest of my face, which might be part of it, although the swatch is pretty sheer. Wow, I really thought I was going to title this video, Luxury Lip Balms Are All Disgusting, or something like that, because that's how I felt as these have arrived and I've tried them. This is better. It's more wearable though than I initially thought. It's balmier than I originally thought. It has a faint Chanel makeup scent, like a faint perfumey scent and taste, but I think that it isn't that strong. I feel like it's fading. It's something that I can put up with. It's definitely not as bad as some of the other products. So let's reassess. Is it thick and nourishing? It feels nourishing. It doesn't feel really thick, like a super healing substance. So it's kind of a half check mark for texture. Is it overly pigmented? No, I actually think it's not as overly pigmented as I originally perceived it to be. 
I think because of the frostiness, I might not be able to get away with wearing it on a totally no makeup day, like wearing it just as a lip balm. But I actually think that even if I just had a little bit of makeup, like a tiny bit of skin coverage and a bit of brow gel, I think that would be enough to balance it out. So I actually think that it's going to work for no makeup makeup days. That's great. So it has a checkbox there, I guess. Three out of five. Scent isn't as bad as I thought. Four out of five. Shine isn't as dull as I thought. It doesn't have that absolutely drenched wet jelly shine of the hourglass, which was the reigning champion after the other video, but it's shiny. It's not matte. The more I wear it though, the more I'm tasting a little bit that Chanel taste. I think that scent, it doesn't check my box for scent. I find the scent a little bit off-putting. And what I've learned about myself over the years is that often when I'm testing something on camera and I'm all excited and I'm like on, I don't tend to mind a scent as much because I'm like firing on all cylinders and it just isn't bothering me. But then in the day-to-day, like once it goes into my vanity drawer and I'm picking amongst all of my products. If something has that sharp, bitter, sort of perfumey taste or just really strongly scented, I'll overlook it time and time again. So I actually think that if this were unscented or it didn't have that scent that makes you feel like you're putting something perfumed onto your lips, like it tastes like you're breathing in perfume. If it didn't have that, I think it would be actually more of a smash hit than I was expecting it to be. As it is, it's really nice with some drawbacks. Okay, up next we have YSL Rouge Volupte Candy Glaze. Some of you in the comments were absolutely convinced that this would be the one. You were clamoring for me to get this. You were like, Hannah, the thing that you want that you don't know that you want is the Rouge Volupte Candy Glaze in number 15 showcasing nude. You were all very specific and it made my job easy. I just went and got it. When I first opened it up, I was very optimistic because it's shiny. The tip of the bullet is really shiny. It has that jelly-like shine, again, that the hourglass has, and it clicks up, which makes me think that it's that sort of solid state goop that is really shiny. It has to be held in place by the tube of it. So that's why it has a clicky mechanism so that you won't like roll up too much at once. It feels like it's kind of a jelly balm and I was excited. I had high hopes. However, the pigment, y'all, the pigment. I mean, look at it on my hand. This is a lipstick for me. I'm looking for something that has like a tenth the level of pigment of this, if not less pigment even than that. It's very beautiful, super shiny lipstick. It has a lot of great qualities, but it is just not the very lightly nourishing tinted balm, like that product that is primarily a sheer shine to nourish the lips that has a little bit of pigment so that it doesn't just feel like a chapstick, but feels a little bit exciting, a little bit makeup-y. That's what I'm looking for. This is not it. I wonder if YSL makes either this product, but in a, a sheerer version. Like, is there a color in this range that has less pigment? Because some color ranges are like that. There are ranges in terms of the color, and then some of them randomly have way less pigment than others. Or does YSL make another product very similar to to this that's just more of a tint and less of a paint, because that's what I feel like this is. So going through the list, texture is phenomenal. It is really thick. It has that stick to maybe even better than the hourglass actually, because it is as thick, but it's less goopy. Very, very beautiful. YSL might have my ideal product. They're doing a lot of what I want. It's just that this isn't it. It's the pigment, right? We've already covered it. It's a big no. It absolutely looks and wears like a lipstick on me. I could blot it, but then I would lose the shine. And that thick coverage for my lips, which is part of what I'm looking for. The shine is there though, at full application, very beautiful. It totally checks that box. And it has a wonderful to me fruit scent. It doesn't taste or smell fake or chemically. It's like a peaches smell and taste. And I can really get with that. I think for this type of product, I would ultimately prefer unscented, but if it's not gonna be unscented, then this is a close second in terms of what I'll enjoy slathering all over my lips all the time. Scent is better than the Hourglass, the winner from the other one. That was unscented, but had a really strong menthol taste. This is better than the Hourglass in every way, except for the pigment level. The pigment level is so important to me that it's a deal breaker. So I will still wear the Hourglass way more than I will wear this, even though I feel like it comes closer in most ways to what I want. I'll wear this as a lipstick though. I'll wear this on camera. So those were the first two that I tried. I'm going in order of the experience that I had trying these on as they arrived. And actually, neither of them turned out to be as bad as I thought. I think that here I'm really being systematic. I'm examining each one. I'm giving each one its due. I'm going through the checkboxes and I'm realizing that both of these check more of my boxes than I thought. 
it's just when I was trying them on, I was like, is it perfect? And I threw it on and I was like, no, wah wah. Like I did that with both of these. And then I had high hopes going into the iconic number three product. Yes, everyone, it's the Dior Lip Glow. I got it in the shade Rose Nude, which I think is a limited edition shade that is less pink than the viral Rose Wood. It looks very similar to Rose Wood, which is like their viral shade, but I thought it would suit me better. However, why is it so pink? Why did I end up with this kind of bright flamingo-y sunset pink? Maybe it would have gone better if I had gotten a brown, if I'd gotten mahogany or something like that. But I was trying with these four to stick to like a single color palette. I feel like that was a flaw in the other video. I kind of picked randomly irrespective of the other products. I just randomly picked from each range the color that I thought would suit me the best. But in these, I tried to pick from each range a kind of neutral rose, neutral light rose or neutral translucent rose. But I tried to pick the ones that looked like they were leaning away from pink and into beige because those colors tend to suit me better. The longer I wear this, the pinker it gets, and it feels like it's making my lips pink. It almost feels like it has that pH adjusting ingredient in it, and just nobody has told anybody about that. I'm probably casting aspersions. It's probably not true, but this is the color that my lips turn when I have one of those abhorrent pH adjusters on, and I don't like it. However, the product has good qualities. Let's go through. I'm just disappointed by how different a shade it is than what I saw in the listings, and in swatches too, because I liked my research when I was selecting a shade for this product. Texture. The bullet is pretty hard. It reminds me more of the NARS than anything. It's pretty hard, mm, but I actually think I'm getting a little more than the NARS. NARS was my original reigning champion, the Afterglow Balm, and it's just too thin. This, if I apply it and apply it, it gives me a little more than that, a little more nourishment, I feel. So I could go for it being a bit thicker, a bit more of a coating layer, but I feel like it's nourishing enough, it's thick enough to pass muster. If everything else about it were amazing, then it would be nourishing enough to be my favorite. Pigment level is good actually in the swatch. So maybe it's just an issue of having picked the wrong color for me, but I kind of do feel like the long longer it sits on my hand, the pinker it's getting. And that's how I feel about it on my lips too. I'm just suspicious of it. Whether it's the pigment color or the pigment level, I'm unhappy with the color, the way that it looks. It's sheer enough that you would think that it would work, but it ends up looking like a lipstick on me for some reason, either because it's changing the color of my lips or because it's such a bright pink, it ends up looking like a lipstick on me. And I wonder if there are other shades in the range that wouldn't do that or not. I feel like with Candy Glaze, the YSL, it was so pigmented that I think that it would hold its own looking like a lipstick on a lot of people. Maybe not everyone, but a lot of people. But this, looking at how sheer it is on my hand, I think that the fact that it looks like a lipstick on me is largely due to how fair I happen to be and perhaps also due to the color. So it might just be a case of it being not a good fit rather than it being a case of this not being a lightly enough tinted product. In any case, this isn't going to make me want to wear it. I was really hoping, because this is such a beloved, famous product, that I would want to reach for it over and over again and slather it on my lips. It really seemed like a likely candidate to be the winner, at least in this video, but it's just too pink. It's just too pink. Shine is actually kind of there. I like the shine. It's beautiful. I'm into it. And taste, it's vanilla mint, which I'm not mad at. The mint, it, it feels a little plumping, a little teensy, teensy, tiny bit tingly. I want to see my lips look like when I wipe it off. Yeah, it does look like it stained them a little bit pink. I don't think it's done any pH adjusting because it's not that horrible raspberry popsicle stain. It's sad because it, it actually checks a lot of the boxes. It, once again, when I first put it on, I was like, oh no, disaster. And now I'm like, oh, oh no, it's actually just the one thing, which is that it's the wrong color for me. It's leaving a little bit of that pink stain on my hands, that like pink popsicle stain. So I would be worried that other colors would do that too. Of it, I don't know. If you have more experience with Dior Lip Glow than I do, let me know if there's another color that isn't gonna stain my lips pink, basically. Maybe I just got unlucky with my choice. Okay, lastly, Givenchy Rose Perfecto Beautifying Lip Balm in the shade 111. The packaging, y'all. It's a beaut. The bullet, this swirled bullet. Even the color of the bullet looks incredibly beautiful. I had very high hopes, but there are two major problems with this product for me. 
The first one, even though this is last on my list, it is such an enormous and dominant problem that I'm going to mention it first. The scent. The scent is overpowering. It's so strong. It feels like somebody poured an entire bottle of some kind of Givenchy perfume into the vat when they were mixing this. It tastes like I'm eating perfume, like someone's spraying it into my mouth. It's unbearable. I mean, it is unbearable. It's like a floral, like a classic floral perfume. It also feels a little bit tingly. I think it's doing some kind of plumping, but everything else about it pales in comparison to how impossible I feel this would be for me to wear around in my everyday life. And I'm not like intensely averse to scents and weird flavors and stuff in makeup. I mean, over the years, I've grown to prefer less heavily scented things or unscented things, but I can handle it, especially in certain products. This is just beyond. It is another level. It shocks me. So there's that. And the other, I think, huge problem with this for me in my search is that the level of pigment, even though it's a bit sheer, I mean, it's not as pigmented as, for example, candy clays. Some of the medium that the pigment is in is milky, like has a white base. So even though it's a bit sheer and the color is actually phenomenal for me, it's like a slightly brown my lips but better color, it just ends up registering like a lipstick on my skin because of that slight milkiness. One of you commented this on, I think, the other video, and you were really on point that one of the parameters that I think I wasn't able to articulate but that is coming out the more I search is translucency. I'm looking for something that doesn't have a milky base, that doesn't have any white base in it at all. So it's not just about the pigment level, it's about the nature of of the medium. And this fails that test in a way that shows me the problem with milkiness. It's like that is what's causing things to look like lipstick. I really want to be able to see my lips through the product basically. So setting those huge issues aside, it doesn't look bad. I mean, especially because I'm here with a full face of makeup and the color is good. It absolutely doesn't look bad. The texture could be thicker, but it's it's interesting. It's hard to say that it feels nourishing because it's so perfumed that it feels like it's probably bad for the skin on my lips. It's not that thick. Like, it could be thicker. It doesn't feel that balmy. It feels a little bit thin and slippy. But the bigger problem is the scent when it comes to whether it feels nourishing or not. We've already covered the pigment level. It's pretty shiny, but it's a little bit shiny more in the way of like a chapstick and it doesn't have like an extra glossy shine. So I feel like it kind of fails that test for me. And then we've already covered the scent. Because of how much it failed the scent test, I feel like this is the biggest disappointment of this video. It is absolutely the one that I will never wear again. I just can't abide. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to reapply the Chanel Rouge Cocoa Balm, which actually I think turned out to be the surprise winner of this showdown just between these four products. However, it doesn't unseat the reigning champion, the Hourglass, which I should have down here. If I was doing it right, if I was good at my job, I'd have it down here and I would compare it. But you know, you've all seen the other video, I think, or you can go watch it easily and see how I look in it. So this is a surprise winner, but even though it didn't disappoint me when I put it on here on camera as much as it did when I first put it on, up close, it's really frosty. Can you see that? And that frostiness gives it a strong cosmetic look. It really makes it look like a lipstick, like a makeup product. And I think that that isn't registering as much here with this full face of makeup, but it was very off-putting when I applied this product when I wasn't wearing makeup. It looked like I had grabbed a frosty lipstick and stuck it on my face. And because of that, it really, really misses the mark. I feel like this is a lip balm only in the context of a full face of makeup. And that's just not at all what I'm looking for. It means that I'll probably wear it. I'll probably find a way to wear it because I do often put on a full face of makeup and then I'm just looking for something a little bit shiny, a little bit nourishing to finish the look. I bet I'll wear it for work a lot. I'll wear it on camera a lot, but it's just not what I'm looking for. And it's only the winner of today's showdown because the other ones were such spectacular fails in terms of what I'm looking for. The Givenchy is definitely the bottom of the list because of that strong smell. But these two, even though they're so different, I can't really rank one above the other. The pigment level of candy glaze just makes it the opposite of what I'm looking for. It's a total no. And the bright pink color of this 
lip glow also makes it the opposite of what I'm looking for, and it's a total no. I think probably lip glow is second because in terms of my check boxes, it checks more of the boxes, or yeah, I get, it kind of checks more of the boxes, but Candy Glaze, this I'll actually wear. Like, I'll wear it as a lipstick because I actually like how it looks, even though it doesn't fit the brief. But this color of Dior lip glow, I just won't wear. I don't like how the color looks on me. So for me personally, the rankings are Chanel number one, Candy Glaze number two, and then these other are total fails and I'm never going to wear them. In terms of what I'm looking for, the Dior could have been the winner if it had been a different color. So that is it. I should have listened to everyone, I think, who told me to try the Bobbi Brown Extra Lip Tint. I didn't include it in this video because I wanted to do just true luxury, like the, the famous fashion houses. I wanted it to just be Dior, Chanel, Givenchy, you know? But based on the reading I've done, I have a sneaking suspicion that the Bobbi Brown Extra Lip Tint might actually be the one. And I am also going to do the drugstore showdown. So remind me below this video which drugstore products I should try. And let me know if you know of anything else, luxury, high-end, or drugstore that you think might check all of my boxes. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you will subscribe if you haven't yet done that. And I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. I think we got it.